So following up on video number one, which is on the properties of integers, in this video we're going to discuss number lines. What you can do is if you don't want to write out lists of numbers, you can represent essentially the whole scale of integers, but also actually not integers, uh, on what's called a number line. And a number line generally looks like this. It's a line that extends in both directions, and on it are tick marks representing essentially the numbers that you are uh, on the number line, whether they're integers or non-integers, it, it doesn't matter. Now let's say this were zero. Now my picture doesn't show it, but these ticks are usually going to be evenly spaced. So let's just say that's one, two, negative one, negative two, negative three, three, and so on. Now these ticks are generally going to be equally spaced. As you move to the right on your number line, you're going to go up, so you're going to become more positive. As you go to the left, you're going to go down, and you're going to become uh, more negative. Now we could you know, imagine for a second we zoomed in on this region of the number line. You could zoom in and get different scales, right? So imagine we also had a number line like this. Zero, one, negative one quarter, negative a half, negative three quarters, negative one. And then on the other side, one quarter, one half, three quarters, one. Note that we have equally ticked spaces, but now we're on the scale of quarters, right? And you can imagine this could go as big or as small as you want, right? You could have a number line with scales of 10, 20, and 30. The fact of the matter, the point is, is that regardless of the scale here, because these number lines are going to be drawn to scale, you are, you should be able to make estimates about what numbers would be based off of the number line. So for instance, if I asked you what this number was approximately, you'd probably say something like negative a half, right? Because you can guesstimate that, okay, this is about halfway between zero and negative one. So that's going to be minus a half. You could also say, all right, this number right here, that would be one and a half uh, for the same reason. What about this number right here? Well, it would be a number between zero and a quarter. So halfway between that, that would be one eighth, and so on. So the key with these number lines is the ability to estimate what unknown numbers would be based off of these ticks and these spaces. Now, where this will come into hand in handy for the actual SAT, and they can ask you a bunch of different questions on this topic, but they might say something like, you know, what is the value of x? Um, or they might say something like this, which is more common, you know, what is the value of x minus y? Which would require you to figure out what x is, plot it in, figure out what y is, put it in, and then do the subtraction. Sometimes you'll see something even nastier. You'll see like, what is the value of absolute value of x minus the absolute value of y? Which means you've got to take these numbers, put them in to the x and y, absolute value ties them, and then subtract them. So you can get any range of different kinds of problems here. You might also be asked about distances. So if I asked you what is the distance between different color here, this point and this point, you would tell me hopefully three, right? One, two, three would be the distance between these two, and this would be a segment of length three. So there's a lot of different kinds of questions they can ask, but as long as you know the basics of how to read these things, you should be fine with whatever they throw at you.